federal appeals court has ruled Donald Trump can face trial on charges that he plotted to overturn the results of the 2020 election. The three-judge panel yesterday rejected the former president's claim that he is immune from prosecution. Trump's legal team is expected to appeal the decision to the Supreme Court within days. He has won in some ways, though, by buying time. Let's bring in former U.S. attorney and MSNBC legal analyst Joyce Vance and former acting U.S. Solicitor General, MSNBC legal analyst Neil Katyal, Jonathan Lemire and Mike Barnacle are back with us as well. Joyce, I'll start with you. Has Donald Trump won in effect that he has bought a lot of time for himself? This could push the trial date to an area that, you know, goes beyond the election? Or do you think the Supreme Court might act quickly? Right. So I think this is all in the Supreme Court's hands now, Mika, because as you point out, although Donald Trump loses resoundingly, he does not have presidential immunity that pre prevents his prosecution. For Trump, it's a matter of days and weeks and months and putting this case off until it can't be tried and he can't be convicted before the election. So the Supreme Court has options here. And one would be when Trump files his request that they continue to prevent anything from moving forward in front of the trial court while the appeal is underway. He has until Monday to do that. The Supreme Court could treat that as his request for them to hear the appeal. They could act on it. They could set an expedited briefing schedule. And we know that the Supreme Court can move quickly. Um, when it wants to. It's doing that tomorrow morning when it hears the 14th Amendment argument from Colorado. So short answer, it's up to the court. Uh, Neil Katyal, same question to you. Also, Donald Trump, of course, responded saying this was nation damaging and all sorts of things. Um, just like in his civil cases where it was a jury of his peers, explain how this three-judge panel, panel won ruling that they co-wrote is actually significant and nothing like what he's saying. Yeah. So first of all, on Donald Trump's claim in his latest tweet, which is if presidents aren't absolutely immune, then every president is going to be indicted when they leave office. I think that's the real indictment of Donald Trump. I mean, Trump can't even imagine a presidential administration that could function without leaving evidence of a crime, which, as the Court of Appeals pointed out yesterday, we've had 45 other presidents. None of them have needed this absolute immunity. He's the first, and so it's awfully suspicious. On the conversation you were having with Joyce, I think what we are looking at with this D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals opinion yesterday is really the last word on absolute immunity. I think these are words that are likely going to force Donald Trump to be looking at a criminal trial for the January 6th insurrection and to be looking at that trial before the election. And I think, you know, underlying this opinion yesterday is the idea that the American people you know, need to know and that no person is above the law. Um, to go to the Supreme Court, it's going to take four justices of the nine to agree to hear the case and five justices to stop what's going on in the lower court and stop the trial. It's possible that they could get Trump could get those five votes. But, you know, when I read this opinion, it looks like the kind of the opinion that the Supreme Court won't touch with a 10-foot pole. It's thorough. It's well-written. It's unanimous. And most importantly, it's obviously correct. I mean, this is really an opinion that I think shows the legal system working at its best and the law being back, finally. It's three judges with dramatically different political and judicial philosophies that are coming together. Um, one of the judges is Judge Karen Henderson, who is uh, a very conservative, well-respected judge, and she signed every word of this opinion. So, Neil, you just said that you're, you express some confidence there that this trial, the federal election interference trial, the January 6th trial, for short, would take place before the election. Tell us why you think that, because there are certainly, as other legal experts have said, there are ways this could slow down. The Supreme Court could agree to hear it, but maybe not till October. And there are other machinations as well that this could still slip and slip and slip. Uh, why do you think it won't? It's going to take five justices on the Supreme Court to, to say that. And in order for five, of course, anything can happen. And, you know, Trump has the point that the Supreme Court has never squarely said that presidents have or don't have absolute immunity from the criminal law. He's right about that. The Supreme Court's never squarely said it one way or the other. 
The reason they've never said it, Jonathan, one way or the other, is because it's a crazy claim, as Donald Trump's own lawyer basically admitted to the Court of Appeals, saying that under their Trump view, the president could go and set out, send out Navy SEAL Team 6 to go kill his political opponent and then go presumably kill the senators who would uh, decide whether he could be impeached or not. I mean, that can't possibly be the law. In so, yes, there's a gap in the law, in the Supreme Court's precedents. They've never squarely said it, but that's because some things just don't need to be said. I think that's likely the way the court's going to review this. I mean, be one thing if there was some sort of very modest claim that Donald Trump was making, but this is a claim of, you know, basically kingsmanship, and uh, that's not our Constitution. Would be